Rub up your engines! Well, Ford's joining some of those electric car makers, only it's not with their electric cars. They're telling people to park their regular cars outside, not inside their garage, so they don't burn their house down. Yes, Ford's recalling a bunch of SUVs because the cars might start on fire even if the ignition switch is off. In May, they recalled 66,000 vehicles with the same problem. Now they're doing 100,000 more SUVs. Now these are 2021 vehicles, and it turns out that the circuit boards are shorting out and they can start on fire. The circuit boards are part of the battery junction box. One of the ground wires is bad. Sometimes the soldering is bad and they can start on fire even when you got the car turned off. Now they're saying that they're not even going to have parts until September. So I guess if you own one of these things, you're going to be waiting July, August, and maybe another month, three months. Oh, park your car outside now in the hottest time of the year, right? Here's one of their solutions. They're going to put drain holes and have the active shutters open. So if under the hood it gets too hot, the fuel vapors won't be hot enough to ignite. Oh, great. You still got leaking stuff, but oh, yeah, it'll evaporate, right? Talk about a half assed way of fixing something. So if you're worried, go to the National IA Traffic Safety Association.gov and you can put in your VIN number and see if your Ford's been recalled. 2020, 2022, Ford Escape and Ford Lincoln SUVs and some Maverick small pickups. And these are all with a 2.5 liter hybrid or plug in hybrid vehicles. As usual, they're having problems with hybrids. Too much technology, electronics leads to problems. Any fool can see that. The higher the voltage, the more chance you have of having a problem. If you got one of these, you gotta park it outside for a while. Like I said, just go to the NHTSA.gov website. You can see if yours is covered. If so, you should park it outside. So if it burns down, it will only burn down your car and not your house. Great quality control here, people. No worries, said. Hey, Scotty, there's a lot of rumors that you died. Can you prove to us you're not dead? Thank you. I don't feel like I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Although with the state of uh, computer CGI graphics, maybe this is just a graphic, Scotty. Who knows, you know? <laughs> but on the other hand, when I drove from Rhode Island to Tennessee, a big trucker passed us with an 18 wheel, then he slowed down, beeped, and he waved. So he knows that I'm still alive. Huh? People are throwing rumors out that I'm dead. I don't know. People have wishful thinking or something. I don't know. Maybe the car companies are putting it out because they don't like people telling the honest criticisms of what they screw up. On. So who knows? But as far as I know, I'm still alive and kicking. I mean, it is hot. I felt like I was dying the other day. It was 101 degrees outside. And with the humidity here in Tennessee, it was like 125 or something. So then I just came down here in my bunker where it's nice and cool and made videos down here. As far as I know, I'm still kicking. And he says, my check engine light and track off came on. Got a 2000 Lexus. I replaced the 15 amp fuse for my lighter. It didn't work. So I put back the old fuse and I went to check my air filter and oil. I was driving a check engine and track off light came on. I never saw that happen. Help. All Toyota and Lexus products, especially the old ones like that. They've got software that if your check engine light ever comes on, often it will also turn the track off. So the track off light will come on because it's a software thing that if you have a problem in the car, they don't want to activate traction control because the car might not be running right. And if they put traction control, it could make it so slow you might get in an accident. So they turn the track system off. Now, what you got to do is get it scanned. Email me the code. I'll analyze it for you. You never know any reason that something can happen. You take a fuse out and put a fuse in. They should not make the check engine light come on. And your lighter's not working even after you change the fuse. So this problem in that system. If if I were you, you get the code, then you got to analyze the code and pray that it's more or less a coincidence. Maybe your gas cap's loose or something. It'll say there's a small evap leak. See what the code is. Send it to me and I'll analyze it. But understand, there's probably nothing wrong with your traction control system. When a check engine light comes on, that automatically shuts off the track system in most cases. There's a lot of different codes that can be stored. Some of them won't turn the track off, but a lot of them will. So find out why the check engine light is off first. That's where you want to start. Maximo says, should I replace my Denso AC compressor. 2011 Honda CRV. It struggles. Should I replace it with a new Denso compressor? Will it make a difference? They are better compressors. I'll give you an idea. Denso generally made all the compressors for Toyotas. They have the most reliable AC systems in the world. Honda, on the other hand, has used many different manufacturers. I guess they're in a price thing. If somebody gives them a better price, they go to that company. They've used lots of things. And it's one big problem with Hondas, especially your CRV, is the compressors are kind of crappy and they don't last that long. They break all the time. I would say, for every 50 
Honda compressors I replace. I might replace one or two Toyota compressors. If you can find a Denso compressor that fits on the car that has the same mounting and the same connectors, feel free. I would myself. They're better compressors. They're better made compressors. And yours is what? 12 year old car. And yeah, they just wear out over time. I would use a Denso myself if you can find one that fits. Apex says, why does my rear suspension sound like a harmonica? I had four struts and strut mounts replaced in my car. When I push up and down, it sounds like a harmonica. He's got a, a video there. All right. Well, you had them all replaced. What did they replace them with? If let's say they use those quick struts, the ones that you can buy that have the springs and everything together, those are all cheaply made. They're not nearly as good as the factory ones. If you want to do your car correctly, the best thing to do is to take your factory struts off, take them apart, put a new strut insert in it, reuse the spring. If your top of your strut, the strut mount isn't broken or cracked and the bearing spins freely. You reuse that. If not, get a new strut mount too with it. They obviously screwed up the job when they did it. It should not make noise when you push up and down. A lot of times those aftermarket ones are just crap. You're supposed to have insulators between the bottom of the springs and the top. And if they don't have insulators, they'll <laughs> because of that. So obviously something went wrong with that replacement. Now, if you want to try the absolute cheapest fix and it often works, get a can of WD-40 right? The new stuff. Spray all around those springs and the strut mount. Now, if the noise goes away, maybe it'll stay away for quite some time because they're new struts or maybe they just needed a little lubrication because something was touching somewhere. They screwed up the job or they used cheap parts because uh, let's say they didn't use replacement hole struts, but they took them apart. That means that when they put them back on, they didn't have the rubber insulation on the bottom or on the top. And then the metal spring is going to go <laughs> forever. They have to take it all apart again, put the insulators in, put it all back together again. Obviously, there's a screw up here somewhere. Well, the war in Ukraine and chip shortage has not hit many. Many cannot build manual transmission equipped cars now. They can build the automatics, they're dual clutch transmissions, but they can't build the standards because they can't get the parts for them, right? If you've ever driven a Mini, a all right. To me, they're kind of overhyped. They're cute looking cars, you know. Women like them, they look real cute. But they're kind of dogs. They're kind of slow vehicles, right? You got to get a standard transmission, and really, you're better off with one supercharged or turbocharged to get any kind of zip out of the thing. So, a lot of guys like buying the standard transmissions. Now, this isn't a deal that many said we're not building on standards anymore. They couldn't get the parts, so they can't build the standard transmissions. Now, interestingly enough, with the minis, the price of the automatic dual clutch transmissions and the standards, it's the same price. So, you're you're not going to be paying anymore. But as far as I'm concerned, they're no fun to drive with an automatic. They're much more fun to drive with a standard transmission. At least they get a little more zip this way. With the way the world's going today, they can't even build the manual transmissions because they can't get the parts for them. What they claim, of course, what people claim what actually comes to fruition is often completely different things. That by 2030, they're only going to make electric minis. Now, who knows what is actually going to happen by then? Look at all Boris, they had England. Well, he just resigned. Nobody knows what the political Political climate is actually going to be and what they're going to actually build. You got to get an automatic mini if you're going to get one. So if I were you and you're thinking about buying one, wait until they can build the manuals again because they're no fun to drive with automatics. They're just dogs. Well, if you own an electric car, you think about buying one, realize you're going to get a challenge when it's time to buy new tires. They can cost a small fortune. Even on a crappy little car, it can be a thousand bucks for four tires because they have special tires on them. For example, Tesla tires come with Michelin tires that feature acoustic tech that's got foam inside, supposed to quiet it down. If you want to buy those, there's various places that can sell them. And a full set is over a thousand dollars. And it's not just to make them quieter because cars don't make much noise and you don't hear the motor noise. So the only noise you're going to hear is the tire noise. So they want to quiet that down. But of course, EV tires have specifically designed tires to reduce the rolling resistance so they get better mileage so they can go a longer way before you have to recharge it. And if you know anything about tires, low rolling resistance and exceptional grip often are against each other. You can get low rolling resistance, but they don't grip as good when you slam on the brakes or when you accelerate fast. So you got two things going in opposite the directions here. You want them to have less friction, but if they don't have enough friction, they're going to slip. And of course, now the car manufacturer is coming up with all kinds of different car systems for tires that will fit on them. But who knows which is going to work right? Most guys are going to go with the factory one over a thousand bucks for a set of tires. Plus, you got to realize that a lot of them are four wheel drive and you got to buy all four tires at once. You get a blowout on one, then you can't just buy one tire. You got to spend a thousand something bucks for all four. It gets to be an expensive endeavor that a lot of people don't even think about that stuff. Plus, the 
tires wear out faster, they have more torque, and they weigh more because of the batteries. So they wear out faster. I've seen electric cars have their tires wear out at 20,000 miles. It's a lot of money to spend every 20,000 miles, a grand plus for tires. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.